Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I hope you've had a good lunch. What an amazing morning we've had. I've learned so much and I've been so inspired as an older adult. This is an amazing summit so far, and it's going to get better and better as we go on. Our first guest this afternoon describes himself as a virtual warrior, a relationship builder, dad, husband, crock pot slow cooker artist, and garagist, winemaker, wannabe. But do you know what he really is? A matchmaker. Kevin McIntyre takes pre-tired older adults, those are the ones who haven't fully retired, and he matches them up with small to medium companies and nonprofits. Now, for example, recently a beverage company in New Brunswick needed someone with grocery store distribution experience. So Kevin checked his database of over 10,000 people and he hooked up the, be the beverage company with the perfect person in Vancouver. And, you know, it's so easy to do that in the virtual world. So if you need an expert for a day, a week or a month, Kevin can match you up in 10 days or less. Or if you want a little pre-tired work yourself, Kevin can match you up. After he speaks, he'll answer all of your questions. But right now, please join me in welcoming the Chief Customer Officer of Baby, excuse me, of Boomers Plus, Kevin <laughs> McIntyre. Wow. Um, that was quite an introduction, Helena. And I'll tell you, man, I, I can't plug Boomers Plus any better than you just did. You absolutely nailed it. So thank you for that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen now. And I've got a slide deck that I'm going to go through. So <clears throat> um, I don't need to say much about Boomers Plus. I think Helena really did nail it. Uh, it's at the essence of what we do. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Boomers Plus uh, a little later in the presentation. I, I have about I, what I think about 25 to 28 minutes of uh, presentation here. I'll, I'll really try to talk about Boomers Plus, what we do. And yes, there will be another shameless plug for us somewhere in the slides. I apologize in advance for that. Uh, but I want to highlight the fact that um, how it's kind of like the how and why uh, organizations sh should leverage wisdom and experience of what we call seasoned pros and seasoned pros or seasoned professionals you'll hear me uh, use both is really about older workers and why they need to retain and hire older workers for organizational growth um, so that that's going to be the main theme uh, why they need to hire why they should hire so let's set the table for that discussion so I don't know who here has heard, but there's a, apparently there's an $8.5 trillion problem in the world. In, in 2018, Corn, a global human resources consultancy, did a global research study, and it outlined the $8.5 trillion problem. And here's what they said, which, which intuitively... Um, you know, we know there's going to be a, a global talent shortage, but, but when they put the math to it, it gets rather scary. And what they said was by 2030, there will be a global talent shortage of more than 85 million people in the world. Now, when they put math to that, they said that that will equate to an $8.5 trillion in unrealized revenue and thus economic growth. So, so the key message that they were trying to get is the world is facing a large talent shortage and we're going to need baby boomers to work longer. And we'll get into some other facts and figures in a bit as to why that's the case. But I think organizations are starting to realize that they need to be a lot more creative in retaining and attracting older workers, what we call seasoned pros. Um, but the other key point in the study was it's not just about hiring and retaining full-time workers. It's about being creative 
So looking at part-time, intern, project-based roles, because they will be needed and wanted from the older workers. Now, what does this mean to us in the local market here in Atlantic Canada? In um, APEC, Atlantic Provinces of Eco Economic Council, a, a, a uh, economic think tank here in Atlantic Canada, did a study recently and said, and, and, and here's some interesting stats for you. In 1990, they stated there were 20 new workers entertaining the region's labor market entering the region's labor market for every 10 workers retiring. So 20 new, uh, 10 retiring. In 2020, there were only seven new workers entering the region's labor market for every 10 retiring. So you can start to do the quick math and say, there's a talent gap and it's only going to get worse. And I think uh, we don't necessarily uh, feel the pain yet maybe in Atlantic Canada some organizations do or know it's uh, or know it yet but it is coming I love this quote from Albert Einstein it's it's the only source of knowledge is experience um, so so we're starting to know and realize that we have a talent shortage problem occurring you know, my belief to solve the problem, not mine, others too, we need to think differently. And what do I mean by that? Experience needs to be seen as an asset versus a liability. And that's kind of the undertones of ageism that I think all of in our talk earlier this morning stated nicely that that just needs to go away. Um, but from my vantage point in the marketplace and what I'm hearing from our customers and who's uh, conducting services with us, there are certain segments of the marketplace that do see it differently, that do see the experience as an asset and are leveraging it today. I think there needs to be more organizations doing it, um, but we'll get into who, who now is taking advantage of it in a few minutes. So another quote, um, and this is a quote that the Boomers Plus team uh, believes in. Uh, Wisdom is the reward of experience and should be shared. Um, you know, we play our part in making sure that experiences are shared or accessed for the benefit of communities and organizations. But one of the challenges in sharing or accessing that experience can be finding it. And what do I mean by that? So there's something we call a hidden talent pool. Now, the, the, the facts and figures say that across North America, 10 to 15,000 boomers retire each week. That is what we call the hidden talent pool. All that wisdom and experience is hidden as most of them are not actively looking for work. So they're outside the these search channels, they're sometimes hard to find. Um, and that's where we play a bit of a role as a matchmaker. So I, I was talking to a friend of mine recently and, uh, and Danny said, uh, I'm about to retire. Now, what am I going to do? And, and I think a lot of us hear that. And I love the term, pre-tirement or pre-tired. I've, I've heard it recently. I think it's a great term. I actually forget where it came from, but I'm, I'm hope, uh, while many of you uh, in this summit today are probably in this category, I like pre-tired versus retired. Um, it describes a lot of older workers who've retired from their main career, but are now figuring out what work they want to partake in in the pre-tirement phase. Uh, now, some people retire and they want to stay retired. <laughs> That's all good. Um, but some people re pre-tire and want to do something else until they retire. Um, so are you retired or pre-tired? And the Boomers Plus database, our national database, is full of what we call pre-tired season pros. So switch gears for a bit and let's talk about the different talent strategies organizations use to grow their businesses. 
and, and maintain the talent they have. And, and, and what's changing with these models now? Um, you have, there's three renditions of the build, buy, borrow model. And let me explain them a little bit. <clears throat> build typically is you hire young and develop your skill set. So there's career development and they stay with you for a long time. Um, that's where you use job boards to find your talent. Uh, buy is typically when you go outside of the organization to hire a skill set that you need that you may not have today in your organization. Could be executive level, could be a specialty skill set. So you go to the street to find it. And that's where search firms play a big role. And then there's the borrow category. And this, this really is the new category. Um, you know, you hear words like freelancers or gig workers or gig economy. And the borrow side is where organizations can hire part-time to project-based roles. And that is what I would consider to be Boomers Plus sweet spot in terms of the searches that we do. And in terms of the people in our database, um, you know, a vast majority of them want to work projects part-time that suits their lifestyle. Um, so organizations can access their wisdom and experience um, but do so in a creative manner, part-time or project-based. But when you think of it, um, due to the growing talent shortage and the exodus of knowledge from organizations, that borrow category is just going to grow in importance. And organizations are going to cre get creative to hire the experience and wisdom they need in that borrow category. So another way I like to put it is renting. Renting wisdom and experience. Um, and yeah, shameless plug here. Um, so, so, you know, we never associate the word rent with, with hiring somebody, but why not? Why not rent a CFO, rent a project manager, rent an operations manager, procurement, accounting, sales, you name it. Um, could be one day, two days, three days, four days a week, your call. It's available, but uh, call us. Um, so renting wisdom and experience, I think, is an opportunity for organizations if they have the systems and the mindset to leverage it. Here is a cartoon um, from Gary Vaynerchuk. <clears throat> uh, Gary is a very successful speaker and serial entrepreneur based in the States. Uh, and, he, and he put this on his it was LinkedIn post he did a while back. He said, you know, isn't it risky to hire older people? And his answer was a good one. It said, risky, are you nuts? I see it as the biggest opportunity in business today. And the level of experience is remarkable. Any skills that need to be taught are minor league. And, and that to me is the right perspective on why you should hire older workers and why you should hire for wisdom and experience because it is that experience they bring is remarkable and many organizations need it. Uh, Gary definitely gets it, and he sees the advantage of leveraging that experience. So our story, <clears throat> a little bit about us. Uh, Helena said it very nicely in the beginning. Um, we are a matchmaker, but if you think of what's happening in the marketplace today, you have seasoned professionals um, on the right side. They're, they have all kinds of experience and wisdom. But they're in that, what we call that hidden talent pool. They're hidden from existing channels. Sometimes they're hard to find. Then you have organizations who are dealing with world talent shortages. They need experience um, and they need them to fill, you know, project roles, short term, medium term and full term roles. So what we do is we provide that matchmaking role in the middle and we connect organizations to seasoned professionals and we can do it in 10 days or less based upon our matching platform. Now, why do we do what we do? And I think that's that's important for any organization to have a belief or a mission or a mandate. Uh, and this comes from our founder, Rick Emberley. <clears throat> and, and, you know, in Rick's words, he said he started this business to harness a huge and emerging economic, social and cultural asset in our society. And he was talking about the 50 plus or 55 plus cohort that are exiting their traditional careers, but remain very interested in contributing to their communities and organizations. Uh, 
Uh, so he says, uh, you know, the, the team at Boomers is working on solving one of Canada's, Canada's most pressing issues, but also huge opportunity. And that's how to best serve organizations and communities to help them tap into that massive hidden talent pool to leverage their wisdom and experience. And that kind of sums up what Boomers Plus does. So, you know, there's there's something that I believe is called a COVID shift. Um, it has occurred in the pandemic we're all into today. And one of the things that I think is um, just, uh, you know, remarkable that's come out of this pandemic we're in, uh, virtual is a thing. And, and, and what do I mean by that? When you think of it, you look back over the last 14 months, <clears throat> it has become accepted to conduct business via video calls, Zoom calls, um, and you can build relationships via Zoom. And, and you know, I've built relationships in the last 14 months with um, folks uh, across the country um, and many big, medium, uh, large organizations and government and have been able to do so in Zoom. So, so virtual is a thing. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, you know, now we have, uh, and I'll get into some of the services, but we have virtual advisors now who advise from the comfort of their home, on their couch, by a video, and they're advising small businesses, nonprofits. We also just launched virtual mentors. So we have folks who are mentoring uh, organizations, um, and they sit all across the country, but are doing so virtually. Now, there is a a preference to be face to face, but what we've shown is virtual can work as well. And and one of the new ones here is virtual seasoned professionals or remote seasoned professionals. Um, organizations, and there's a couple in particular, have hired um, seasoned professionals with specific exper expertise, uh, but they sit in Northern Toronto and the businesses in New Brunswick. So the new thing that could be coming is virtual seasoned professionals, hiring that wisdom and experience, but doing it virtually. Uh, just as a, as a funny aside, there, <clears throat> there's two t-shirts I wish I had bought and made this year. And one is virtual is the thing, because I think it's been proven. And the second one is the t-shirt you were on mute. And I need to wear that because there's times I talk and I'm on mute or there's, there's times that, you know, I'm on a conversation and someone else is on mute. And I think that would have been a great T-shirt to have in these times. Um, and the fact that we're having this uh, summit virtually and there's so much engagement and, and so much dialogue in it in a virtual manner um, would have been thought of differently 14 months ago. So virtual is, is definitely a thing. Just an example of, of how you can rent a season pro um, and, and how uh, organizations are starting to leverage wisdom and experience in new ways and how they are starting to see it differently. And this is, this is one of our customers. Uh, Hercules is based in Dartmouth. Um, they have services and business across the country. Um, they needed a project manager for a four to six month project, a very uh, specialized skill set in ERP software. Um, our season pro Kirk was uh, semi-retired or pre-tired. He was in our database. Um, we matched Hercules with Kirk. He was excited by the opportunity and what the project presented. And we were able to connect them in less than 10 days. Um, and we can match that fast because we have thousands of season pros in the database kind of sitting on the bench, so to speak. And if something comes up that interests them and they're available, they're ready to go. Now, what's interesting here is um, they start to see this hidden talent pool as, okay, if I can dip in and get Kirk for a project, maybe there are other projects or other part-time roles and maybe some full-time roles that I can dip into the Boomers Plus database and take advantage of that wisdom and experience. And I think that's the mindset change that's occurring that it doesn't always have to be full-time. It can be part-time providing you're getting the experience you need. Here's, <clears throat> th this I think is a great story um, and it's not told enough. 
um, virtual advisor program. And I, and I actually, uh, I, I, I take a lot of pride in being part of the team that created this program, but it showcases the power of, uh, how leveraging experience can help organizations with issues relating to the pandemic. So, so let me give you some background on it. March last year, as we all know, COVID hit and our customers, which are mainly small business and nonprofits got hit hard and are still struggling. Um, we asked people in our database if they would volunteer some time to help small business and nonprofit work through some pandemic issues. 300, well, over 300 people agreed to volunteer their time to help out. So 30 days later, we created this thing called the Virtual Advisor Program, and its intent is to help leaders through uh, COVID-19. Um, we are helping small business and nonprofits, and, and there's all kinds of examples of success stories in it. I'm going to give you one in particular, I think is local, and it's a nice one. Um, but I'm excited to say we are currently en route to help over 500 organizations and they they're in Nova Scotia to Ontario work through pandemic issues and we could never do that without uh, without the wisdom and experience we have in the database and and I do want to say that it, this is a COVID service that we launched it's cost recovery uh, we're not making money on it but it really showcases uh, what accessing and leveraging wisdom and experience can do so let me give you a let me give you a fun example of it. Atlantic Flamenco Productions. Um, you know they're a nonprofit based here in Nova Scotia. Their mandate, which is kind of self-explanatory, to enrich the local community and educate and promote appreciation of dance and flamenco arts. Um, their issue is uh, their their whole web presence uh, was a little bit outdated. Needed some work. They needed a rebrand to adjust to the times, and they really wanted to focus their energy more towards online. <clears throat> and they also needed a bit of guidance around working remotely. So they really required, you know, when you think of it, communications, digital marketing, and IT experience. Now, we were able to match them through the virtual advisor program with Paul. Paul is a virtual advisor. He is a branding, marketing, communications expert based in Toronto. And the really neat thing about Paul was he had a, he has vast experience in the entertainment industry, which is what Atlantic Flamengo is in. So it was to me, it was one of those perfect matches. Um, and the solution is Paul helped them with some rebrand and digital planning and thinking. Um, and now from Flamenco's point of view, their market has expanded from local to worldwide. And Paul has helped narrow their target audience in a way that they've never done before. Uh, as, and uh, he has demonstrated and showcased what makes them unique. So in Flamenco's own words, having someone with so much experience and advice and to take a look at what we have and help define moving forward has just been absolutely fantastic. And that's just one sample. There's all kinds of stories where um, success stories of engagements with that program. And then one more, <clears throat> our, our virtual mentor program, we just launched it uh, recently. It's a structured 12 month program designed to help current and emerging leaders uh, survive and thrive. Um, and what's interesting is, uh, one pro, well, one of the cohorts or programs we have running now with our partner Schwenker and associates is running across Nova Scotia and we're helping 23 current and emerging leaders, <clears throat> 23 organizations across Nova Scotia with this mentoring program and their mentors are based from here to Ontario, to Western Canada. So they have virtual mentors going through it. And I don't think this might've been possible 14 months ago. Um, and, and this is a nice quote from Olive, Olive Bryanton this morning in one, she was one of the first speakers and she made a great statement, made a lot of sense to me. She said, you do not have to be working to contribute. And, and I think uh, mentoring is a great way to contribute and give back. And that, that was just a nice quote from Olive. Okay, so let's change gears a bit. 
Um, here's another reason why organizations should leverage wisdom and experience. This, this was a research study done by Clover Pop, uh, and it was published in Forbes magazine in 2018. And what they did is they researched 200 business teams over two years to produce the findings that they've come up with. And if you can take a look at the chart, it's somewhat self-explanatory. What they found was diverse teams make decisions, make better decisions 87% of the time compared to teams that aren't diverse. Uh, even better, what they found were those teams also made decisions twice as fast as those that are not as diverse. And one of the things they also found is that <clears throat> those with diverse teams required half the number of meetings to get to the results they wanted. So when we talk about diversity, yes, we talk about um, gender diversity, geographic and racial diversity, but we also should be talking about the benefits of age diversity. Um, so it, it, you sum it all up, the more diverse an organization is, that's the better they are. Now this one here, I think um, intuitively we know that the labor force is aging. But let me explain this slide a little bit. Uh, in 1994, if you take a look at the pink bubble there, um, which is the, uh, what is it, 35 to, sorry, yeah, 35 to 44, um, they're 19%, sorry, 45 to 54. The slides I'm looking at are black and white. Uh, 45 to 54 and the over 55 category is 12 percent of the marketplace in 1994. Now we hear uh, all us older workers are retiring uh, so that segment must be smaller but in actual fact in the projection in 2024 is that the cohort that is um, over 55 in the black there on the right is going to be 25% of the workforce segment. So the myth is that the number of workers over 50 is declining, but actual fact that is not the case. So, you know, when you think of it, retirement in the traditional sense is not really the norm anymore. And there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. You know, people are living longer, they're more healthy, there could be changes to retirement plans. Um, they to keep their employee-based health coverage or they need to work for financial reasons or they just want to keep working. Uh, and the bottom line is that the labor force is aging and working longer. So companies really need to adapt and leverage to retain that wisdom and experience. So, so um, this is a book by Chip Conley, <clears throat> Wisdom at Work, The Making of a Modern Elder. Uh, Chip Conley spoke at an event we were hosting in Toronto a few years ago on modern elders and seasoned professionals. And there's just a couple things I want to take from the book that I think are interesting. Um, he talked about a, a European study that identified that only 8% of the European companies studied have rate that have race and gender diversity plans include age diversity as part of the overall planning. And that number is really low and has to increase significantly. Uh, another interesting quote from the book, uh, and he, say, he stated that the old life model used to be learn till you are 25, earn till you are 65, retire till you die. Now that was the old model. The new model he talks about is there's now lifelong learning, earn throughout your life and retire only when you want to. Uh, if you've not read this book, it is a really good read. I suggest you, you pick it up. So a little earlier in the, in the discussion here, I talked about, I would get at who's leading the charge today. Who, meaning who's leading the charge uh, and is really doing a good job of leveraging wisdom and experience of seasoned pros. And what we've found <clears throat> so far is there's, there's really two groups. One uh, we do a lot of work with, there's entrepreneurs. 
And entrepreneurs are those small, medium business owners and startups. Um, entrepreneurs like to <clears throat> look at an opportunity and seize it. And I think they're doing a job and they understand that that um, leveraging wisdom and experiences will only help the organization grow. And they're doing it creatively as well. It's not just full-time hires. It could be, could be part-time. It could be project-based. And the other group um, that is, is taking advantage of this hidden talent pool are executive directors of nonprofits. Uh, we've done some work with national charities and local nonprofits, and they can hire really experienced people on a part-time basis. So for example, <clears throat> we've had nonprofits that needed some governance advice for their charity, and they were able to hire uh, someone one or two days a week. In this particular instance, it was one day a week um, to help them through governance issues. And we've had nonprofits hire former CFOs of large organizations to help them with their cash and their fundraising activities. So nonprofits, I think, are really uh, leading the charge in terms of accessing and leveraging wisdom. Uh, larger organizations, from what we've found so far, I, I think they still have human resource systems and processes that are somewhat inflexible um, to hiring, you know, part-time and project workers. Uh, I think that's changing and it needs to do the ongoing talent shortage. So to start summing things up here, and I hope I haven't inundated you with too many facts and figures, <clears throat> the opportunity for any organization is leverage wisdom and experience and do it in a creative way. The one thing that I didn't really talk about was network. And when you think about it, a seasoned pro who has decades of experience can bring a vast network to an organization, to a small organization, to a startup, to a nonprofit. And that could be a huge other benefit for the organization is the network and the relationships they bring. So I would be remiss if I didn't mention that if you want and plug that if you want to join Boomers Plus Talent Pool, it is free. All you need to do is go to our website and sign up. It only takes five or 10 minutes and uh, please join us. And it is free for, for Boomers to join. And then for organizations, um, if you wanna talk to one of the team about our services, you can find us uh, on our website at Boomers Plus. You can email myself or you can email Boomers Plus and we would love to have um, that conversation. So I hope today I've given you some examples as to why more organizations should, can, and need to leverage the wisdom and experience to help grow their organizations. I've, um, I've had fun presenting here today. And now uh, I look forward to a discussion that we can have in the Q&A session time we have available. So I want to thank you for your time and attention today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kevin. Uh, I'm going to be monitoring all the questions, but I, uh, Kevin, I'm going to ask you a question first. Sure. Uh, so you said, and I love this quote, you said experience needs to be seen as an asset, not a liability. So how does this jive in a world in this dot com world where we see so many young, you know, billionaires, gazillionaires and everything else. And they're doing it like early on, you know, early on in their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we how do we say to them, hey, wait a minute, we've got wisdom, we've got experience, we can help network and offer all kinds of things to you. So yeah, I'd just like to, to know your thoughts on that. Yeah, I, I, and, but I think we hear about when you say billionaires and stuff, we, we hear about the, the few of them. And there's a, there's a lot more people out there than just billionaires. There's, there's very few of them. We just hear a lot about them. I, I think one good example, Helena, is, is um, the startups that we work with. Um, and, and they all, the startups in this space, all want to become billionaires or the next billionaires, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but they, they see the benefit of hiring folks 
um, they'll need financial experts. They'll need capital experts. They'll need operations, sales, and marketing. And and being a startup and a small business, you sometimes don't have the budgets to hire full time, but you still need to leverage that experience. So what I'm finding is startups are hiring folks like we've placed um, CFOs, we placed operation managers one, two, two days a week with startup companies. So as they grow, they might take on more, but the reality is they are leveraging that wisdom as they grow their business. So, so startups is an area we, where we do a lot of work in. And I think that's the group that looks at what budget they have today and what the experience they need and, and they can leverage a program like Boomers Plus. So in your database, all the people that uh, are coming to you, that you have uh, the pre-tired people, by and large, what's the majority that, that uh, small to medium-sized businesses and nonprofits are looking for? Who exactly, who are they looking for? Wow. Um, well, I'll tell you, it, it, it's, it's all over the map. Oh, yeah. If you think of a function in an organization, um, right from sales, marketing, operations, finance, uh, you know, executive positions, we've probably matched it um, from project managers. Um, typically, any business role you can think of, manager and above, we've probably matched in our database. Fabulous. So let me, yeah. let me go to some questions. I mean, that is... Sure. Uh, Terrific. How does the seasoned pro ensure that their wisdom and experience is sought out and valued? I felt that I was less valued the longer I was there before retiring. Yeah. And, 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 you know, that's ageism um, yeah. and it's out there. It's real. And, and, you know, the, the work that we've done is, and which is why I said it towards the end of the presentation, entrepreneurs and executive directors really understand the benefit. Um, it's the larger organizations that I think are not early adopters of this new model. And, and the concern I have in the larger organizations are that there, you know, there, there is an exodus of you know, brain power and knowledge that may not be replaced in the organization. So, so it's not just small, medium, and, and nonprofit. Large organizations have to do some rethinking around. Hey, uh, experience is still valued, and if if uh, an older worker is getting closer to retirement or retirement, uh, maybe there's some creative ways to 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 you know start go to part-time go to project-based so they can still access that wisdom that they may lose uh, it, but the reality is uh, the problem's real uh, and what's going to bring a solution quicker to it than i think would have normally happened is there is a world global talent shortage and it's growing bigger every day and organizations are going to have to realize that they're going to have to change and adapt if they if they want to keep the talent they have or attract more talent, do you find that uh, there's still a a, a, a a thought pattern of well you know what all these older workers they're they're taking jobs away from us uh, younger adults they shouldn't be going out there either through Boomers Plus or or anything else. Yeah, but but you know what the facts don't hold that up. Mm. I mean the the reality is. We're going to need the young workers. We're going to need the older workers. And, and any, any of studies that I've read and some of the studies I've used in the slides here today say that we're going to need workers of all ages in all segments because of the world talent shortage is real. So I, I, I hear that in the marketplace, mm -hmm. um, but I don't think the facts bear it out. Yeah. Here's another question from uh, L. Rankin. Uh, how does your organization work? For example, is it a purchase membership to get, just a second, to get access to and or be listed in the directory or more like a temp agency with fees and uh, percentage and a contract? That's a good question. So yeah. uh, you know what, Kevin, uh, can you start it from the perspective of uh, uh, this person? So 
if I'm I'm pre-tired and I go to Boomers Plus, what are the steps that I have to uh, to take? Yeah, so that's a great question, and and thank you for asking it. Um, so, so, if you're pre-tired or retired and you want to join Boomers Plus, first and foremost, it is free. Uh, you go to boomersplus.com, you fill out a profile, it takes five or 10 minutes, you upload a resume, and then you're in our database. So it's free to join. Where we make our money is organizations pay us a matchmaking fee for matching an organization to a seasoned pro. That's where we get paid. So the baby boomer or the seasoned pro, uh, it's free to join. Okay, so so they join. So uh, let's say I'm the uh, you know the small uh, business and I need yep. a CFO. So I get a CFO. Uh, so what do I have to first of all complete, or what's the, the, the what are the hoops I have to run, uh, jump through yeah. to, get, to be part of your matchmaking group? So 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 from the boomer we've described to join and it's free and that's to become a season pro in our database for an organization. Um, what happens is they will contact us and then they will say, um, I need, I need this role filled part-time project based, some full time. They will fill out <clears throat> from our matching uh, technology platform. They will fill out an online position for us from that, from that, we will sign an agreement with them. The, the online position that they filled out goes into our matching engine. And typically with our platform, we'll look for people who have that skill set and that experience. And then our client services team takes over and pairs it down to about typically two to four people to present to our client. And all that takes place in 10 days or less. So our matching engine really speeds up the time to connecting organizations with two to four choices, and then they can go forward and they can interview. And once they interview, they pay a matchmaking fee. Okay. And uh, just just to clarify too, because I know some people are interested in this, yeah. uh, the, does the pre-tired person suggest the, their salary or their, their hourly salary or their rate? Or, or is this something that is negotiated between uh, you know, the matchmaker, the matchmakee, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. So, so, so typically the organization um, will give us a salary range. Like we'll ask them a whole bunch of questions in the, in the online form. Uh, and typically there's a salary range that comes forward that we can present to our seasoned pros. So we present um, how long the project is, how many hours a week it is. Is it virtual? Is it in office? Uh, mm -hmm. What's the salary range? All these are presented. Uh, and then if there's interest from our season pros, because when you think of it, it's a hidden talent pool. It's a, it's a bench that we access to say, hey, got this great project. It's in your wheelhouse. Has your experience? Here are the details. Are you available? Are you interested? And if they say yes, then, then from there, they have general information on the organization, on the remuneration. And then we set up, the match between the season pros and the organization. And we typically present two to four candidates to the organization, and then they proceed with the interview, interview process. So after, after you've matched, uh, what's your success rate? Uh, well, I'll tell you, um, it's over 86% in terms of all candidate or candidates going to interview. And I think it's 88% in terms of people that, um, get hired. So mm -hmm. our success rate is, is very high in our season pros on demand. Yeah. And from the, from the perspective of the, the, the small to business, the business owner and the nonprofit, what's the success rate? Are they satisfied? Uh, yeah. I, I, you know, <clears throat> the fact that they can access that level of wisdom and experience that fast um, per, and particularly geared towards their industry and their needs, uh, they come back and overwhelmingly, and I would say over 92% are satisfied. And, and it, to me, that's the opportunity. And once they see the model, mm -hmm. then they can come back and dip back into the talent pool because they know it's working and, th and that's what's happening. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I know there's another question and I'm, I'm going to get yeah. to it. 
uh, in a, uh, just in a second. Uh, but <clears throat> how much has virtual played a part? How much of a part has the virtual world played in terms of Boomers Plus? Like, for example, once we get to an in-person live society again, you know, just praying it'll happen really soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, will will this business model still work? Because it looks like oh, yeah. you've, got a, you've got a database of over ten thousand, so that's like all. <laughs> Uh, the yeah, and it's so so virtual is a thing, and it's only occurred in the last what fourteen months. Um, mo well, I would say one hundred percent of the matches that we've done, whether whether it's for mentor programs or advisory programs or searches, have been have been in person, in office, face to face. Yeah. Um, it's it's because of the pandemic that you know this virtual advisor program and this virtual mentor program, and and, and the power of it is. You know, we have matched, particularly with the mentor program, which is interesting. We, we have matched a very mature trucking company um, and their their leadership with a and they're going through some, you know, succession planning and, 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 and challenges. And we were able to match them with a gentleman in Ontario that had just exited out of the trucking industry so the so the matches that we can do in a virtual world are just you know magical i mean matching a um a a, a beverage company a small beverage company in nova scotia and, and i think you mentioned it that's yeah, one of my friends yeah. Yeah, yeah well there's there's also a beer company in nova scotia that we did the same thing and and we were we matched them to expertise in the distribution model they wanted to do so so Virtual will always, I think, stay a part of our, our solution set um, only because of the depth of, of uh, you know, we can just match across the country yeah. as opposed as so. So it'll, it'll be a mix when we when we get out of this pandemic, <laughs> it'll be a mix of virtual and face to face. But I think the virtual programming, um, yeah, there's just been some richness in that that we've we've experienced in the last 10 months. Yeah, and, and and you're right, Kevin. You know, uh, when we get into in-person living again, uh, why not still retain that virtual? And you know what, Kevin? Yeah. Why just Canada? Why not the world? Anyway, that's, that's it. <laughs> I mean, so don't get me don't get me started about the world. <laughs> okay, let me let me go to. Uh, I want. I just uh, I just want to uh, tell you what somebody said, and then there's a sure. question. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, what prop, uh, you know, excuse me for moving my head away. I'm, I'm squinting at another computer. Uh, Bill McDonald says he just registered with boomerplus.com. I'm looking forward to continuing to contribute my specialized expertise. Good for you, Bill. And, Thanks, Bill. Yeah. And uh, question, uh, do you see an increase of military retirees? We, we uh, actually, um, we haven't, but we're in conversations now actually in that space mm -hmm. where, you know, when you think of it, um, we say we have a database of over 10,000 seasoned professionals, right? And we do. But the issue is they bring more than just one skill set, right? So, so skill sets are transferable. And, and what I mean by that is you might have someone in the military who was in procurement, uh, hypothetically, in a procurement role, who can transfer that skill over to a to a private company or to a nonprofit, and vice versa. So we have people coming in from government, from military, from private sector, because what we say to people is those specialty skill sets they have are transferable. So yeah, to answer your question, we have an interesting project we're just starting in that space. Um, more to come, but yes. And. Uh, and what about what happens if I'm pre-tired and and I want to still keep on working, but I don't want to do what I was pre-tired in, the job that I, you know, that I went from. Is there some kind of an opportunity for me with Boomers Plus? Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I really don't know how to even phrase the question, you know, to kind of learn on the job. Yeah, well, they're, they're, the ch yes and no on that one um here here's what i found is, has has been happening is you might have some executives who are with uh, medium to large organizations in say a finance role or an operations role who who want to keep working in that field 
but want to do it for a nonprofit. So they transfer the skill set they have into uh, a different sector. So they go from the private sector to the nonprofit sector. So, so that occurs, uh, not so much changing skill set. Okay. Well, I think that we have, those are all the questions that we have, and I've kind of exhausted my questions too. And, you know, I really wanted to break out into matchmaker, matchmaker, make me uh, a match. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't. Wow. Have it. But that's, that's an, a, it's an amazing uh, service that you're offering with Boomers Plus. And, and thank you so much for telling us about it. Well, well, thank you, Helena. And, and I, I want to thank everybody out there uh, for taking the time to listen. And uh, I certainly appreciate it. And if you have any questions or, or, or comments, um, please get in touch. We'd love to continue the dialogue. And I, and I look forward to the remainder of today and tomorrow at the Silver Economy Summit. Um, I love some of the talks this morning. So, so I'm staying on. I'll be in the exhibit room as well. And I'm enjoying the summit. So thanks. Thanks for hosting and, and let's keep the dialogue going. Absolutely. Thank you again, Kevin. Thanks. Thanks.